Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed, alleluia. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, merciful God we, confess we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia, the Spirit of the Lord renews the face of the earth. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hands are the caverns of the earth. The heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Alleluia, the Spirit of the Lord renews the face of the earth. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. And Wesley Berkeley, are you our leader for the psalm? Oh yes, I see that I uh, I, I had muted myself and I, didn't realize, and I was waiting to be unmuted by Nick. Your microphone may be off, Wesley. Are we good now? We are. The psalm appointed for today is a portion of Psalm 104. We will read the psalm in unison. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the great and wide sea with its living things too many to number, creatures both small and great. There move the ships, and there is that Leviathan, which you have made for the sport of it. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand and they are filled with good things. You hide your face and they are terrified. You take away their breath and they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice, rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. 
I'll rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Paphlia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken to the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, for the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks. be to God. God. Let us say together Canticle 20. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Brenda, your microphone may be off. Not me. Okay. No? No? Mine's you're, on. You're okay now. Okay, okay. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another the working of miracles. To another prophecy. To another the discernment of spirits. To another various kinds of tongues to another the interpretation of tongues. 
All these are activated by one and the same spirit who allots to each one individually just as the spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members and all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Let us say together, Canticle 21. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the eternal Father. All creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you, Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. A reading from the Gospel of John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, Joel, and welcome. Thank you. And good morning to everyone. It is wonderful to see you and to be able to gather and worship this morning. And I really appreciate the opportunity to, to share some thoughts with you this morning. Um, one thought is the wistful joy of remembering Pentecost Sunday in years past. And I need to go back and listen to Haley Festival Day because that is part of what I was missing. Uh, that and the, the memory of the streamers as we make our procession into the nave. And I thought especially of the little streamers for little people, as Rita always says. Um, Someday, I hope we can all look back on this year and remember the extraordinary once in a lifetime thing that took place when we, during the season of first Lent and then Easter tide and now Pentecost, it was all kind of co-opted by COVID tide as people sometimes call it. This is the year when a pandemic has pushed us out of our routines and reminded us of what it means to be the church I'm reminded of the message at the end of How the Grinch Stole Christmas. And you probably remember that the Grinch on Christmas Eve did a reverse Santa Claus routine and snuck through Whoville and stole all the presents and all of the lights and decorations and trappings of Christmas, thinking that he could stop Christmas. But when the Christmas day dawned, the Who's gathered and celebrated. He hadn't stopped Christmas at all. And likewise, 
we may not be able to gather in person, but we are still the church, still gathered, still active, still open, eager for fellowship and worship and mission. Pentecost reminds the church of our roots. Today's reading from Acts recounts the day when the Holy Spirit came in dramatic fashion, rushing wind, flames of tongue, and the ultimate polyglot prophecy jam fest. And Peter's sermon, the first sermon in the history of the church, and as far as I know, the only sermon that begins by saying, no, we're not drunk. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. Peter goes on to give a fuller explanation of what's going on, recounting the words of my namesake prophet, Joel, the one who prophesied about God pouring God's spirit on all flesh, men and women, young and old, all prophesying. And nothing is ever the same. Peter proclaims Jesus Christ crucified, resurrected, glorified, and leading the way into redeemed creation. The gospel, this good news, lies at the heart of our message to this day. The Holy Spirit came on Pentecost, and she remains with us, guiding, encouraging, enlightening, empowering. As dramatic as this gospel good news is, the way in which the message broke in is also vital to our understanding of God's heart for this wacky, wild, mixed up, messy world with its plethora of cultures and its cacophony of languages and voices. The fact that everyone heard the prophecy in their own languages was not just a really cool trick, and it wasn't, strictly speaking, necessary. Yes, people had their own languages, but in that day and time and that part of the world, everyone spoke at least a smattering of Greek. Peter could have given a simple sermon in Koine Greek, and the message would have gotten across. God was doing something a little deeper here than just a neat trick. God choosing to speak to each person in their native tongue shows God's eagerness to meet people where they're at, in their cultures, in their customs, in their words. It signals that the gospel is good news to all people in all places and all times, and that the gospel does not get lost in translation. God meets us where we're at and transforms. He doesn't just overwrite. He doesn't just replace our pasts. God energizes and fulfills the good news, news that as line lay dormant in every people and tribe and tongue and nation. And we, boy, do we ever need this message right now. The swirl of troubling news around us is like a whirlpool spinning around and sucking us in. Think of the events of this past week. In the United States, COVID-19 deaths topped 100,000. It's a grim and staggering mile milestone and my heart breaks for victims, family, and friends. And my heart boggles at the divisive pettiness that swirls around this, our response to this. Um, pettiness such as over the basic neighbor-loving act of wearing a mask in public. And at a time that calls for global cooperation, I'm afraid what I see is our commander in chief of the Me First movement burning the midnight oil, spawning messages that pit nation against nation, state against state, community against community, brother against brother. We see 40 million unemployed, an economy in free fall. We see even basic necessities like shelter, food, and health care on the verge of collapse for millions. And to top it off, we see the appalling latest chapter in our nation's shameful story of racism and oppression as George Floyd's life and legacy is cut short at the hands of those who are sworn to serve and protect. And we see the groundswell of protest, ranging from peaceful protests to incendiary rage, leaving smoldering rubble in its wake. If you're like me, you struggle to know what to say and what to do but you know that the time for sitting on our hands and biting our tongues is past. It's long past. As part of this Pentecost prophetic, prophetic community, we find guidance and courage knowing that the gospel of Christ is good news.
for all people of all times and places. It's a message of hope and love, a message that sees the barriers, the brokenness, the bitterness of endemic patterns of poverty, prejudice, and cruelty. It sees these and can speak a word of healing and hope. God is doing a new thing through Jesus Christ, and this new thing will ultimately prevail. God calls us to roll up our sleeves and join in. I wish I could tell you exactly what this looks like, but I'm struggling to figure it out too, right alongside you. Knowing that God meets us where we're at and speaks a message of good news that does not get lost in translation. Knowing that God has given us the gift of God's spirit and the gift of being together in community. I know we can find our voice and be a part of God's work transforming, bringing life, bringing hope, bringing love. Thank you. Let us continue with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O God, who on this day taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending to them the light of your Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Gracious Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Fill it with all truth, in all truth with peace. Where it is corrupt, purify it. Where it is in error, direct it. Where in anything it is amiss, reform it. Where it is right, strengthen it. Where it is in want, provide for it. Where it is divided, reunite it. 
For the sake of Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Savior. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, from whom comes every good and perfect gift, send down upon our bishops and other clergy and upon the congregations committed to their charge the helpful spirit of your grace, and that they may truly please you, pour upon them the continual dew of your blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honor of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. The prayers of the people are form six, found on page 392 of the prayer book. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Brian, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Lord, we pray for our community. For all who feel unheard, we pray that you give them voice. And we pray that all will listen, that there may be peace. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. For St. John's congregation. For our bishop. for the faith of our community leaders. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. In this time and in this space, you are invited to share the prayers and concerns of your heart, either silently or aloud. Dear God, we pray for all of the communities, especially surrounding in Minneapolis. We pray that peace will one day be achieved. We pray for those who are in pain, that their pain may be eased. We pray for peaceful protest and that the violence will stop. For all those whose lives have been cut short, may you guide us and lead us in ways that we can be of help and that where there is an absence of love that invokes evil, may we share your love to all. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray today for those who are celebrating birthdays this week, for Deb Paisler, Charlene Haas, 
William Christian, Janine Edwards, Kevin Arnold, Bert Pettijohn, Lorene Kerr. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit bless and preserve each of you. And may he give his holy angels charge over you to guard you and guide you in all of your ways. Amen. Let us pray together the general thanksgiving found on page 836 in the Book of Common Prayer. Accept, O Lord, our thanks and praise for all that you have done for us. We thank you for the splendor of the whole creation, for the beauty of this world, for the wonder of life, and for the mystery of love. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends and for the loving care which surrounds us on every side. We thank you for setting us at tasks which demand our best efforts and for leading us to accomplishments which satisfy and delight us. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. Above all, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, for the truth of his word and the example of his life, for his steadfast obedience by which he overcame temptation, for his dying through which he overcame death, and for his rising to life again, in which we are raised to the life of your kingdom. Grant us the gift of your spirit, that we may know him and make him known, and through him at all times and in all places, may give thanks to you in all things. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And before we close with a final blessing and dismissal, thank you, Brenda. Thank you, Wesley, for reading for Joel, for the wonderful homily <laughs> for Nick, for playing Hail the Festival Day. Remind you that coffee hour is at 10. We have a zip, different Zoom number for that. And it will be about an hour, and the National Cathedral service is at 1115. Wonderful to see all of you. What a great joy to see your faces. Thank God for technology. The peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you and your loved ones always. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you.